Shame. 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 What's going on, YouTube? Hope you guys are ready. Cause I'm ready. Got a little something um, to talk about for a little while. I'm not gonna hold y'all long. Of course, it's too late to be trying to hold somebody too long. But you know what it is. <laughs> Who's fuck wild with the trigger? Shame on a nigga. Who's fuck soft? Fuck that up. Yo, hot one, hot two, hot three, hot. Shame. 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 Shame TV East Watch. Your host here, Derek Jones. Also, Derek Jones Talks Live. Yes, we are not faded. We are only going to thrive. This will be one of my last videos for a couple of days. So, enjoy. Shame. 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 Let's go in. He said, I said he made a statement, which was actually a true statement. I'm, I'm not bringing up, you know, y'all did that thing y'all did. said he made a statement and he said that he don't believe in the Bible because the Bible is an anti-African book. Hmm, very interesting. What about no fucking African? I'm not no fucking African. Number one. That's a never talk. Go ahead. That's not never. Yeah, that's not never talk. I'm not no oh, fucking African. Let's get some people. Tell me you niggas know nothing about it. Oh, oh, oh. oh, oh. Yeah. Yeah. Y'all can claim that call you want. Some niggas look at y'all like a piece of shit. So wow. Wow, wow, wow. Shame. 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 Chanel, you have way too many things on your plate. And I'm not saying that, that what you did was malicious. Chanel, you have way too many things on your plate. Chanel, you have way too many things on your plate. Chanel, you have way too many things Shame. on your plate. Shame. And I'm not saying that, that Shame. what you did was malicious. You're doing way too many things. You are the promoter. You're the media person. You're the you're the hype man. You you're the moderator. You're the judge. You do yeah, all man. these. You wear all these different hats, and that's way too many, brother. That's way too many things. So when somebody's coming up, and and you're supposed to be moderating, you're wearing way too many other hats. Not that that not that you're being it maliciously. You are not qualified to be a moderator and the promoter and the hype man and the judge. And you, no. Shame, shame, shame. What's going on, guys? Quick little conscious coon, um, cons audio there for you. Something you should be familiar with. People hate me in this game right now, guys. Truly, truly, truly hate me because I like to focus on the point. I like to stay focused on what we're actually fucking talking about. So I don't get lost and confused. One of the main reasons I do that is so that I don't get lost and confused. I don't want to put words in your mouth. I don't want you to put words in mine. So I like to clarify things and I go off of things that people say. And you heard clearly Tazariak say, how, um, hold on two seconds, y'all. Okay. Yo, definitely on that shit that we talked about too, maybe. On the other thing that we talked about. Oh, yeah. All right. All right. All right. 
Birthday Friday, nigga. So be ready. I don't know what I'm gonna do yet, but it's gonna be something. So I'll let you know. That was Mark. Crazy. I'm sorry. All right, my nigga. <laughs> All right, y'all. I had to clear something up real quick. Now that that's done. Now that that's over with, we can get back to our scheduled play, um, our scheduled program. We had a lot of interesting things going on tonight, especially with the um, interview that Kev did with Tommy Sotomayor, which was out of the blue. And Kev, call me, man. That was me who just called you, nigga. So call, I was calling you from my house phone. Call my, oh, you could call my house phone because I'm gonna be using my phone doing this right here all night to that conscious fraud. Shame, shame, shame. Okay, what's going on, Afia? Deep Prince. Yeah, man, Tasha Pope, of course, Cosmic, everybody's here. Tom, what up? Uh, where the hell is Salima at? Did, she, did I miss her? She'll be here shortly, more than likely. Anyways, um, you guys seen what went on tonight, man. It was a very interesting interview. I had no idea that that was going down. And it was so crazy because my um, lady had just woke woke me up, and I was like, "Well, I might as well stay up." You know what I'm saying? Because I could have went back to sleep, but I stayed up, and then I ended up catching most of it. You know what I'm saying? Near the well, basically near the end of it, and um, the middle and the end. And I had a little bit of audio from Tommy Sotomayor that I put together, but uh, what up, Rock? But um. We'll go into that in a, in a few. What I did want to talk about, though, first was you um, the whole interview itself and the recap of what was going on. You have a lot of people who take issue with Tommy Sotomayor, and I take issue with Tommy Sotomayor on certain fronts. And then there's certain fronts that I have no problems with Tommy Sotomayor whatsoever. Now, what am I saying? I say, I'm saying all this to say what? Some things he says, just like anyone, could be true. And they make a lot of sense. And a lot of times people say things, I mean, he says things that are extremely harmful and detrimental. And I wonder whether he's aware of this or not. Excuse me, let me get on my polite cognizant. Now, if he's aware of this, which I don't think he is, it may, let me say this. I sometimes think that he is. I think that sometimes Tommy, Tommy Sotomayor says the things that he says because he, it's shock TV. You know, listen to this black man, this um, African-American as they're called, um, as we're called sometimes, talking about other African-Americans and other African-American women and things of that nature. So I feel like, yo, it's a, um, Sometimes I be feeling like it's a shock thing. And then sometimes I feel like he's being sincere. Like this is really how he feels. You know what I'm saying? So it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a thin line between with me and him. But the things that he says on an overall basis and the positions that he take, I just do not agree with. And I think that that is counterproductive to any person of, to, of any race to do that. Where we're going to use the term race. So I think it's counterproductive for anybody to do that shit. I think it's counterproductive for a Mexican person to run around talking shit about Mexican people with white people. You know what I'm saying? Like white people have enough flaws and things like that to, bro to be brought up that you don't need to be known for a person who fucks with nothing but your own race. Now, I've also seen Tommy Sotomayor in situations where he was giving people money or sisters money and looking out. So I don't think that he's a completely heartless person. I just think that part of me feels that this is just for his YouTube platform or his YouTube TV entertainment platform that he does these things. Now, with that being already put out there in the air, yeah, Shock TV gets him paid. 
you know? And I think that it's the my biggest issue with you, Tommy Sotomayor, I'm gonna say it just like this. My biggest issue with you is not what you say necessarily, not how you say it, because you have the right to your own opinion and people should respect you for that. My biggest position with you, problem with you is the things that you say, whether you know it or not, more than likely embolden racist, bigoted Europeans or people on the fence to do a certain thing and act a certain way. So I think that what you say and do emboldens people to become more bigoted and more racist towards black people. I think that what's up, Green? I think that everybody is, I think that in a, in a way that you're using the shock TV thing, this is just my opinion, first off, let me state that clearly, that I've never met Tommy Sotomayor nor talked to him, so I'm not gonna make definitive statements about him. You know what I'm saying? And that's that, you know what I'm saying? So everything he says is what it is. Like when he mentioned earlier, hey, you can't say anybody, to find anybody to say he's been frauding them and things of that nature. Well, I agree with that, yo. He probably, you probably can't find people who, who can say that. You can find it about the other motherfuckers who I'm glad that Kev did the show. Now, before I get into Tommy Sotomayor and all that, I don't want to get sidetracked, guys. I had a list of how I'm going to do this tonight. I wanted to stay on point. And when my um, brother coming through just a second ago kind of threw me off. What I want to stay focused on, guys, mainly is this. What Kev did tonight, whether you like it or you hate it, was provide more access and more exposure towards a situation that we've all been dealing with in this chat and in this little community of ours that we have. Okay? We've been dealing with Sarnetta and we've been dealing with Polite. We could just say it flat out like that. So what happened tonight is those two people got, got their names in the, the, the laundry list of fuckery that's attached to them got exposed even more. So that was... That was mission accomplished in a sense, if you want to look at it like that. It was mission accomplished. So that was a good video. That was a good interview because it got more information and it got more knowledge passed out to the world about what's going on with these two dudes. Now, back to this Tommy Sotomayor thing. Tommy Sotomayor, the effect that you may have overall on black people in and the things that you say and how you embolden Europeans. And that is dangerous. And that is where most of the anger and vitriol from black people comes from. Whether they identify it as that or not, I don't know. Maybe it takes time, maybe it, you need somebody to help them with it. But at the same time, that's what it's about, man. It's about, yo, the way that you go in, yet I can't find one video about you saying anything about anybody else. And, you know, as far as Europeans and their racism, bigoted, and their fucking systemic racism, which is actually wealth holding. Purposely denying other groups of people that don't look like them wealth. It's one thing to get money with your people, and it's another thing to get money with your people, plus put into play ways for others to have to go through extra lengths and miles and jumps and turns and all of this. And to prove that, I'll play a quick audio from Tommy Sotomayor. This is another reason why I believe black women hate black men. Because black men were, are able to, with all the disadvantages we have, we're still the number two sought after man on the planet. Number one. With every disadvantage that black men have, they've been enslaved, they weren't given jobs. When black women were given jobs, we don't, we run around and look extra black, extra dark, we get nappy hair, whatever style we create becomes the norm damn near in society. So we've been... So, it's, it's apparent and it's clear that you know that universally things, universally done amongst black people, our style, our swag, our overall character and presence has an overall effect on the entire world. You know, making that statement, because I only watched the sec second time watching this. 
I've been watching it. So it's like you I'm listening to him and I was like, wow, that's very interesting, man, because you are admitting what my premise is. That you do know, you are aware that things that can be said by small groups of black people can have an overall effect on how they're looked at. Things done by small groups of black people can have an overall effect on whole groups of people. You've seen it before with trends from rap groups to singers and all of this. They do something and they got the whole world doing it. They got whole nations of people doing this shit. Legions of people following them and doing the same thing. So you are aware that what you say and do can have an overall effect on how your people are viewed, even if you're not particularly viewed in that way. And able to overcome what is looked upon as our shortcomings. I also am happy that he also admitted that with all the things black people men have to do and overcome for you to say that what does that actually mean to overcome something that means barriers are being put in your place if we have to overcome something now well, are these barriers being put there intentionally or is this just by happenstance because i think we all know that these barriers were put there Intentionally, can I get a few likes up? I know it's late and I ain't gonna have too many people in here, but it's enough of us in here to get 10 likes. But anyway, the barriers are put in place by these people. You know this, brother. Again, I'm not accusing Tommy Sotomayor of anything. I'm not accusing him of in intentionally doing something I might open. Opinion is that a lot of things he says is just for shock. And then my opinion also wavers to the fact that may, I think sometimes he actually does believe some of this stuff or genuinely, you know, means this stuff. But he is admitting, one, that black people affect things that we do, whether in a small group or not, have effect on the whole world. You're a black man, brother. Why would you think the words that you're saying would not have an effect on the world's perception of black people. That's that's crazy. But here we go. But black women have not been able to do it. So they kind of hate us because they had the opportunity, they had access to white men before we had access to black women. I mean, white women. Yet white women still date black men at like like I think it's four times, four times the number that white men will date black black women. So to them, that pisses them off. Like they've had access to white men since slavery. Now, this is where he and I disagree. I've never in my life seen any black woman deal with a black with a white man that didn't make significantly more money than she did. That's just me. And now there can be situations, especially now out here with these younger kids, because they're so fucking simple minded that it may occur from time to time. But overall, in my 38 years of living, I have never seen, I have seen a white woman taking care of, of, of a black man who didn't have a whole bunch of money. I've seen a, a sister take care of a black man who didn't have a whole bunch of money. I have never seen a sister taking care of a white man who didn't have a whole lot of money. Never. Ever. So on that um, note, Tom, Tommy, I don't, uh, I kind of don't agree with you there because I'm like, yo, from my experience, sisters don't like white dudes. They're not attracted to white men like that because they like black men, just like the rest of the world and all the other, like, just like white women and everybody else. They like black men. And the only other women, I mean, men that I've seen sisters openly date, whether they were financially stable or not, were um, Spanish men, Puerto Ricans. That's it. If they're with a Japanese man, it's because he has money. If they're with a European man, it's genuinely because they're paying for the entire situation. That's genuinely what I've seen. Yeah, and you, uh, you, you flip it around. There's, there's more white men that try to adapt black culture 
than the other way around. Yep. You agree with that as well. That means that black people have an effect on these people, an overarching effect on these people. They're having an overarching effect on their. I've seen black, I'm gonna tell y'all just like this before I get back on Tommy. Nearly every white man that I've ever seen and been around that knows he's married, seen him interact with his wife, yo, they treat their wives like shit. They let them, they they engage in shit like that shit Polite does on a certain, on another level, like having other, they're letting their friends have sex with them. Um, really only acting loving and kind in public. That why, I'm gonna tell you why white women fuck with black men and other races and why you see so many homosexual white women and feminists is because they cannot stand white men. They don't like white men themselves. Okay? They like the way a black man treats them. I'm sorry, that's just what it is. White men have a, 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 a white people generally, in my opinion, of being around them, white people have a passion for show meaning long as it appears that everything is okay everything is okay that's all long as it appears that way so i have like i said i have no problem with anybody doing whatever they want man far be it for me to be judging you and telling you what the fuck you should be doing or whatever i can only give you my personal experiences from my personal experience and from my own life i cannot give you anything else Anything else would be me just getting lying, making shit up, thinking I'll say whatever I can to make this show pop off, and that will never happen. I'll just close all this shit down, and you'll never hear from me again before I turn into Frankie Stein and them. That's never going to happen. And for that, even mentioning that shit, there, uh, there must be. Shame. 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 But yeah, I have um I've I was introduced to Tommy Sotomayor about a year ago, a year and a half ago, something like that. And it's like the first few videos that I saw on him, I am not gonna lie to you people. I am not gonna lie, they were very good because it was they were merely pointing out the things that black women do and how it's basically like a taboo to even mention that shit. And that's where him and I agree 1,000%. I don't think that anyone is above reproach. And the mere fact that someone is attempting to become above reproach, that is a problem. Now, I don't care whether you have a vagina or whether you have a freaking penis. If you feel that you and your group of gender or whatever is above reproach, that the moment anything is brought up about you and the negative um, things that you may do and contribute, and there's a problem, that person gets attacked, there's never a moment of, you know what, of acceptance in what I've done and what we've done as women and what we've done as men, whatever, whatever. That's a problem. That's a fucking problem. Now, guys, for real, that's a fucking problem. There should be no, this whole, I heard Barr say in the chat, or saying in the chat, she's going to do a show, I can't wait to see it. Like, we all here for the God experience. I can't wait to hear, and I'm not going to try to steal her thunder. That's the last time I'll mention that phrase. But I, I can't wait to hear that because that's how, that's why I created Gender War, Hinder War. Because Gender War is a Hinder War. There is no such thing as a gender war that is going to end out in a pros prosperous way for black people. There's no way it's going to happen for us that it's going to be a good thing. So, like, come on, guys. that This whole notion of someone's above reproach, we got to get beyond that shit. We got to get beyond that shit. Like, a lot of black men of fuck with white women here in South Carolina, you said, fear. okay, a lot of, I told you, man, a lot of brothers mess with other women. This comes from being a man and being around men, okay? 
A lot of brothers mess with other women, man, because they're easy, they're tr deep inside, they're peaceful, easygoing dudes. And a lot of sisters bring, whether it's from whatever, whether it's from their parents, her upbringing or whatever, a lot of sisters bring a deep rooted venom that they carry around with them. And it's like, they'll spew this shit at any, un, at any time. There is no specific time when this shit can happen. You know what I'm saying? Like at any moment, at any time, They'll they'll do it if you said it. and you sisters know that I'm not talking about all of you. And you know that. So y'all know what I mean. And and I say this as a man who grew up in a family saturated with women. I've seen every type of woman there is to see. I've seen a schoolgirl. I've seen a slut. I've seen a shy girl. I've seen a shy slut. I see, like, I've seen it all. I've seen the religious girl. I've seen the girl who just wants to be a homemaker. I've seen the girl who just wants to run the streets. I've seen, I've seen it all. Just from being related, just from being in a family where I was out and up, out in, in a, a huge family. So many that I have cousins that I probably drive by and don't even know who they are. Okay. My family fucking reproduces. I had three kids in two years. <laughs> okay, we reproduce. And it's women. I had two girls, one boy. We always, in my family, women always dominate as far as the number. And so I've seen all types of women. So I'm like, I get mad at women. I get mad at you, sisters, and I'm giving y'all a shame. I get mad at you when these things are brought Shame. up when someone like Tommy Sulemaya says something about a black woman. And you know it's true. You know you know women just like that. You know you know women who show up to their kids' school in tights and, uh, excuse me, in, in shorts that could be construed or looked at as panties. You know, you know, there's women out there, there's girls, sisters out here who do that crazy shit. You know, there's women out here who, when the summertime comes, as soon as them, they kids wake up, they kick them out the house all day. The kids be out of the house all morning, all night, just running the streets, doing whatever. While she's in the house trying to entertain some man. Like, you guys know that that happens. So when that shit happens, you have to always, always recognize it and accept it. And I understand that finishing the point I was trying to make, there's a lot of black men that I'm trying to tell y'all sisters, these fucking brothers fucking love you, yo. Black men fucking love black women. But it's this deep rooted venom that seems to be inside a lot of sisters. And it, and it turns us off because that deep-rooted venom is not generally seen in other races. Now, this is where I differ as well because I know that it exists. I know that white women are the pure cause and reason for most, for most of the black men who are hung, lynched, and murdered drug from here to now. That means being put in prison for false rape. I include that as far and being put on trial for false rape. I include that as well as lynching. Okay? So I know the what white women have done in this community Shame. to our people, to Shame. black men. Shame. And I find it fascinating that a lot of black men can sit there and say things that they say without ever, ever acknowledging that. Like, how can you not acknowledge that, yo, Fuck all that other shit you talking about. Black men are in prison right now and have been and been getting fucked over for a long time. And it's statistically proven that white people, white women lie on black men. And what was the rate? It was like an 89%, almost 90% rate. Like nine out of 10 times when a white woman says that she's been raped by a black man, it's a lot. Nine out of 10 times it's a lie. Why would a black man have to rape a white woman?
<laughs> really? You guys must never been around white women before. Whoever believes that a black man has to rape a white woman. Shame. 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 Yo, white women are the most. Listen, when I was in high school, just like other black men, we were chasing the sisters just like every other brother was chasing all the sisters. But we knew where we could go to quickly get our, our you know what I'm saying, our things played with. And I'm going to say it like that just to be PC. Shame. 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 Not all. Not all the sisters. But most of them. You had to woo them. You had to be their, you had to at least be their boyfriend. She ain't giving you no ass, and you ain't at least saying you her boyfriend. And then you know we get to her house and her mother working, and you can sneak in or whatever. You might get to feel her butt titties or something corny like that or whatever. And whatever, keep it moving. But if you knew you wanted the whole thing, we knew where to go. Shame. 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 That's no disrespect to white women. It is what it is. It's in your nature. You guys are promiscuous women. The fuck? So that's why a lot of black men, men do this because white women are extremely promiscuous. They love to have sex from what I've heard and what I've seen. was I've been chased by more than a couple of them. Okay? So from what I've seen and my experiences and heard in life, yo, from friends and relatives who date European women and all of this shit, yo, the main reason they fuck with them is because when it comes to sex, it don't really require no wooing. You just go right in and they go right in and they're a lot easier to get along with. Now that right there is the biggest key to all of this, that, that whole notion of them being easier to get along with. I feel that white women are easier for black men who are not attempting to right this wrong that has been done to his people in any way. Meaning, again, you do not have to run around. I do not run around with red, black, and green on and um, bull horns and shit like that screaming, black power, people, black power, people, and all that bullshit. I don't do all that shit. To me, being a real black man for your people is just being that. That's it. It ain't no fucking thing. It's not something that you can wear. <laughs> Shame. 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 But um, I definitely agree with Tommy Sotomayor on certain points. Certain points I don't. And I'll listen now in this in this little video clip. Hey, uh, the, the same side, the, there are two different sides of the same coin is black women and white men. They... I really, really, really don't like black men. Black women and white men universally agree that they don't like black men. I think that black women would like to control their men a little bit more than they should. That's just a belief of mine. That's, that's, that's no, it's not rooted in any fact. I just think that sisters would like to control their men, brothers, more than they can. That's where you get the threats of the police and calling if you you ain't going nowhere. I call the police and say blah 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 or all that stuff that you know happens before. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I don't know. I don't really on that note. I, that's. I can't agree with it, like I said, but that's his position. You know what I'm saying? Now, I said before, I think a lot of things Tommy says is for shock, and then I said I also believe some of that, uh, most of it he believes. So who really knows on that one? I don't. I can't say. I just think that black women want to control their men more than they should, and they use certain links to prove that. Like I said, calling the police if you want to leave them and I'll threaten you this or I'll take you to child support if you don't want to be with me and this, that, and the third. So I don't think that that's cool. I think that that's not fair. And I think that that should be called out because there's thousands of men upon thousands that that affects. 
So the fact that it's affecting people in a negative way, that means you cannot get a free pass. That means you cannot have this above reproach mentality because people are being affected by that. People are being affected by that mentality. You know, and my problem, Tasha, is with the women, is with the sisters. Like I said, that's why I said it earlier. I have a problem with sisters who, if a black man says, yo, man, such and such and such, and just because I didn't want to be with us, you want to tell me this and take me to jail and call me blah, you got to take me to court or this and the third. You guys know that that's true. So that black man should not have to fight that battle. It should be sisters fighting that battle. That's why I'm so big on if any black man ever in his life sees a fucking European or any other race of man yelling at, screaming at, attacking a fucking black woman, that, yo, he better fucking say something. He better fucking say something. That's how I feel. And I feel that if a brother is being attacked unjustly by a woman, whether she's black, European, Japanese, whatever, Korean, a sister should step the fuck up and say something. Because that's the only thing that's going to do it. Like I said, gender war is a hinder war. That is not no fucking war for some type of prosperous outcome for somebody. Nobody wants to be anybody's fucking possession. Nobody wants to be anybody's fucking slave. Nobody wants to be bound by anybody. If women say they want to be free, well, men want to be free just as much as you want to be free. I know you feel that this is a man's world. I can give you men that will sit down and tell you, what's up, Selena? I will have men sit down and tell you and show you and prove to you how this is a woman's world, just as much as it's a man's world. Now, that's not, like, these things, these misnomers, these notions, common acceptances, and misnomers that are accepted as truth and reality are murdering us. I had a woman on my platform um, speak about um, promiscuity, being promiscuous, um, black women being promiscuous while being in relationships. And she openly, and the reason that I put her on the platform was because the conversation that we had prior, when she was saying that it was shocking me because I don't hear a lot of black women admit stuff like that. I don't hear that. So she was saying, I don't know why um, 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 women always do that, always crying this, oh, men do this, men do that, men cheat. And she was like, yo, I know every friend, every person I know and girlfriend she had that was in a relationship cheated on a dude. Every single one of them. So she was like, I don't know where this notion comes from that it's just men cheating. But we carry these things, you know, every day. And we need to let this bullshit go. We need to let that shit go. Um, again, though, I don't agree with Tommy Sotomayor's method in doing so. I don't agree with taking, uh, counting, counting the five, starting with three approach. Meaning, I'm only going to count the five start with three, even though there's zero, one, and two before there. No, I'm not going to. I'm just going to excuse those two. I'm just going to present this approach. You cannot sit there and simply say black women, black women, black women, because most of these things have a cause. All of it has a cause. The entire situation has a cause. Like to not talk about reconstruction and not want to talk about reconstruction because there's ghetto black women out here so we're not going to talk about reconstruction and how basically reconstruction is what destroyed everything because they intentionally purposely held you back while they were grabbing it's like a bunch of apples on the ground and you at guard gunpoint that you can't move while the other group of people just grabbing apples grabbing apples and damn near with every apple gone and they tired of grabbing apples then they all move away and then we got to scramble over what's left that's what reconstruction was that is exactly what put black people in a perpetual state of debt I'm talking about recent, leading up to history and to the current now. So there's causes. So you can't sit there and blame black women for the way they are. Like, come on, man. Like, it's a lot of variables that go into life that created them to make them the way they are, to make them full of venom. 
Maybe it came from being forced to, to, to jump on Pink Pecker for a hundred years, nigga. Like that. Come on, man. Like there's a lot of variables in life. But at the same time, what he says is true, only in a degree. To take it overboard to as your only focus, that's the only thing that I would love to question him on. Like, cause I was because he seemed like he was being sincere. And I know just coming into this YouTube world, like I've met a lot of people that seem to be sincere. I've seen people flip-flop back and forth. I see people, excuse me, flip-flop here and there, say one thing one minute, one thing the next minute to try to make sure that they move forward. You know what I'm saying? And I'm like I said, I would never do that. I would rip this shit down and I that would be that. I was just from time to time come on Kev's show and holler at Farrell, probably try to come on his show. And I said, hey, what's going on, guys? I got this to present, blah, blah, blah. I would be in and out. I wouldn't even fucking be doing shit on a regular basis if I have to do that. And so it's like, you have to start at zero, bro, with your counting. You can't sit there and just keep bringing up the negative shit that black people do saying, I see why white people wouldn't want to mess with them. Yet, you're not going to bring up the whole reason why black people are generally stuck in the positions that they are. The next show that I do when I return from my little hiatus show, I'm going to um, um, screen share and start showing you guys. I'm going to show you the um, FBI crime statistics. And it's going to it's going to back up everything that I'm saying to you right now. It's going to show you how these people really are the perpetrators of most of the problems. But like I said from the beginning when I talked about white men, they appear to be squeaky clean. And again, they only appear to be squeaky clean just to hide the fact that they're not. Black people lead in crimes of necessity. Okay, because we're less than 5% of this nation's wealth. So if you are less than 5%, and that's including Floyd Mayweather and Oprah and Jordan and everyone that you think is so rich, Jay-Z and Beyonce combined with LeBron's money and whoever else's money, all them NFL brothers, all those NBA brothers, all those actors and actresses, all those thespians, and whatever, all of them include all the black businessmen that you see, all those boule niggas, all the rolling, all take all their incomes combined, and that shit still ain't even fucking three percent of the wealth in this nation. That comes from re reconstruction. That's called starting at zero and then counting the five. And I'm gonna finish this audio so I can get off. I said I was gonna play two forty eight. And that's scary that the women who black men typically procreate with do not like them. Like they don't like black men. And let me tell you why. This is just my, my thoughts. And I know that people can argue it, but I got more facts to prove that I'm right than wrong. The reason why black women hate black men is because ever since they've been in America, black men have been a sign of failure to black women because women are typically mm -hmm. Um, judged by the type of men they can create, they can, they can, they can get. And if you remember back in slave times, see if a black woman had a black son or a black kid, that black kid had no chance to be anything other than a servant. But if that black woman had a kid by a white man, that kid actually had an opportunity to become educated. That kid, if light enough had an opportunity to actually own slaves themselves. So as a black woman, you started to gain pride in the fact that you could create this thing. See, black men were never given that pride because if you fucked a white woman and she had a baby, they'd kill that baby and her and you. Now, interesting, interesting, very interesting. And the psychological effects of slavery down the line, which Polite should know a lot about that hospital he built, supposedly, that no one's heard of in Vegas. Anyway, the psychological effects of slavery have never been looked at by black people in a serious, universal manner. And um, 
That's something that's going to keep us back, guys. That's something that's going to keep us in this gender war, hinder war. It's something that's going to make us look at each other in the wrong light. And I say that because he's right. And that mode, sisters were in survival mode. So being that she's a woman, even though she's a black woman, she's still a woman and she wants her seed to survive. So if her seed is mixed with this, um, the lower, this lower level seed, this animal seed, and it comes out with a lighter complexion, then it at least these animals won't harm it as quickly as they would do if my child looked exactly like me. So all this still points to this group of people who are vile and vicious, and you are doing things to react and, or excuse me, you are reacting off of the vile and vicious nature of these people that you're surrounded with. And that is not being spoken about, and that is a problem, as far as I'm concerned. Well, not, you know, it's an issue that I have with him. Okay, I'm reading the chat, y'all. That's why I'm so quiet. Oh man, this is 45 minutes. Okay, guys, I hope y'all had a good chat with me. Y'all know y'all need to get ready to go to bed. It's just a little audio I wanted to play from him, man, um, just to let you guys hear it because I was like, I don't, I don't disagree with everything that Tommy Sotomayor says, and I don't agree with it either. You know, like I said, he, I remember a video that he did on his, um, on his sister. Yo, he had a picture up there too. And she taking the little girl to school. And yo, literally, yo, she got on like a light little denim jacket, sneakers, holding a little girl hair, and and this nigga got on basically panties. Like, you know how when um sisters like if, if we had a beach or something and y'all be wearing them little shorts, they damn near could be bikini drawers or whatever, that type of shit. And you know what I'm saying? She's standing right outside in school, out her side her school. Like, come on, man. What kind of fucking monkey shit is that? That shit's crazy, man. It's all good, though. But um, like, comment, share, subscribe. Come on, guys. I need you guys to give me some subscriptions to this page. We're going to start building and pushing this thing up. Um, also, Derek Jones Talks Live. I'm going to go and do one live stream from there, probably in the morning, and that's going to be it. And I'm going to be gone for you guys for a few days. Um, Derek Prince, I won't be gone from you because you'll be getting this email. And so that's that. You know what I'm saying? And I'll holler at you. And hopefully we can get something cracking over the next few days. So when I come, because when I come back, I want to come back strong. I want to come back shame strong. Shame. Yeah. Shame. Shame. Yeah. Don't think I forgot just because we talking about other topics. I ain't forgot. I'm not no fucking African. Uh -huh. Number one. That's another talk. That's another. That's another talk. You heard him. You heard him. You Shame. heard him. This me, motherfucker. Shame. That nigga is the ultimate cyber gangster bully, nigga. Oh, no, let's get some other niggas. Don't let nobody know. Oh, oh, oh. I'm playing not to call you one. Some niggas look at y'all like a piece of shit. So y'all keep on saying we have What the fuck does that sound like? Ain't no such thing as that. Listen. We was here before. You heard him. Who heard that? I'm going to play it again. I'm going to play it again. We was here before. Well, the fuck that made we was here before some fucking Africans. Y'all heard him. So y'all know what the next video is going to be. Probably on Derek Jones Talks Live. The next discussion is going to be. Why did you know, son, that, that we're indigenous and every time the Moors come up and say we're indigenous, you bring up a person talking about Kemet and slavery and saying that we weren't? That's going to be the next um, stream conversation on um, Derek Jones Talks Live. So go subscribe. I still didn't put the fucking link in, guys. I don't think yet. I might have. I don't know. But um, let me see. No, that's still that um, Derek Jones Talks. But um, go ahead and go over there and subscribe. 
Like, comment, share, subscribe to my page. Um, I love that you guys still loyal and fuck with me like that. Makes me feel good. Makes me feel that I'm going places with this. Um, even though people try to hate on me and cyber bully me, making comments about my mother and all that stuff. Like, you know, I would never do anything like that to anyone. You know what I mean? Like, ain't nobody making me that mad. You know what I'm saying? So, whatever. But, um, love you guys much for fucking with me. Like, comment, share, subscribe. Uh, I'll be back with you. Shame TV East Watch. It's been Derek Jones and it's been real. It's been fun. Derek Jones Talks Live. Please go and subscribe.